the appreciator talking to you from appreciation central uh, it's strange times it is strange times but thankfully we have good things to listen to and good things to do and if you keep yourself distracted sufficiently um you don't have to really get too into it and when you do you can do it from a lighter hearted way like like doc slees as on his new show uh, doc slees headless men from outer space where he he concoct concocted rather this incredible and fascinating uh I guess you'd call it a conspiracy theory where uh, they're trying to bump off these daring billionaires. I mean, the people who can afford to go down in these submarines. And I mean, the more I hear about this story, I mean, that, 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 have you ever heard the term throwing caution to the wind? That's just, and it's tragic. I mean, I don't want to belittle these people. I mean, they were thought You know, I'm sure none of them thought that they were actually risking their lives for whatever reason. Um, Foolhardiness, perhaps. On the new show, he not only posits that, but he looks at some uh, old sitcoms. And I mean, these are ones that I saw when I was growing up. And he said he's seen some of them, but he, for whatever reason, I guess he's in the UK, and they never uh, imported or he never watched one or the other, a show that ran called Mr. Ed. And uh, some of you may have never heard of it. I mean, when I was growing up, everybody knew who Mr. Ed was. Mr. Ed was a talking Palomino horse owned by uh, a fellow by the name of Wilbur Post, played by Alan Young, who was an aspiring comedian. I mean, he was going to be pretty big. Uh, He was projected to be back in the days of radio, and he never quite caught on. And once he played this guy who talked to a horse, which I'm sure gave him a solid salary, was a this show was not just some obscure thing that ran for a season or two. Mr. Ed ran for many, many seasons. I think it was on CBS. My memory serves me. Yes, my uh, Swiss cheese memory that can't remember what I did yesterday, but can remember TV programs that I watched 50 years ago with this crystal clarity. Um, Mr. Ed was a Palomino horse who could talk. However, the proviso of the show was he would only talk in the presence of his owner, Wilbur Post, wouldn't even talk in the presence of his wife. And the whole show, I mean, is that just creepy? It's like talking to ghosts. Or, and, and he mentioned another show where a woman actually did have a conversation with ghosts as the main function of the program, the ghost and Mrs. Muir was the name of it. And it was about this widow who lived in this house that this unscrupulous landlord or realtor keeps trying to buy. And he, she doesn't want to leave, leave, rather, for whatever reason. I mean, you would think the ghost of her husband would come and show up. But no, the ghost of this sea captain has occupied her home and that interaction and yes it's creepy um we just don't i guess we do other creepy types of tv shows but that's just bizarre like my mother the car where this guy's mother is reincarnated as a 1928 porter which isn't even a real brand of car i guess they didn't want to insult any car makers so they made up a name that sounds like an old car and uh yeah this this guy's mother played the guy was played by jerry van dyke talk about uh, the younger brother of the infamous dick van dyke who as far as i know is still alive and kicking speak of bizarre things and making digressions but in the 60s there were all of these shows where it was like one character was hallucinating and nobody else got to know even i dream of genie which we've discussed i mean nobody knew that tony had a genie in a bottle that he found as an astronaut when he visited the moon 
I, the imagination ran wild, and it makes me wonder what were these people just runaway imagination? Was there something put in their water? Were the Anunnaki whispering things in their minds? It's just so strange, and 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 just this idea. I, I, it really gives me pause to think. I mean, now we have a whole other weirdness, I suppose, shows like uh, Squid Game, where it's very weird and morbid. I mean, all these people and potentially dying. Um, have you seen the Squid Game? Uh, there's a second season coming, which I can't even imagine what they're going to do there. But uh, some of these Netflix shows, like uh, with the oft-mentioned on this channel, Black Mirror, those plots are just unbelievably strange. And not in a Twilight, but I guess maybe the Twilight Zone was strange in its day and it just gets considered normal because I watched it at the time. But shows like The Honeymooners, I've mentioned that. Jackie Gleason, is a, a, to people of today, is a terrifying, screaming, irrational, cruel almost. But Alice loves him. And at the end, it's uh, even though he's yelled at her and horribly verbally abused her, it's, it's, baby, you're the greatest, and she loves him still. I mean, happy endings out of... Uh, scary situations and I guess that's the whole idea of the sitcom maybe I, I haven't watched sitcoms in years although Friends wasn't based on such a bizarre premise it was just you know, friendly people and cheers a bunch of well rather strange people and personalities hanging out in a bar I mean these were I guess that's the last wave I mean the same thing with Seinfeld a show where almost nothing happens and all these personalities, sort of like Vic and Sade, which, yeah, maybe we need a little Vic and Sade right now and, and, and then we can get back to this. And now get ready to smile again with radio's home folks. Chris goes Vic and Sade, brought to you by Procter & Gamble. Say, do you know that cooks all over the country are happy as larks about the cakes they're making lately? And you know Why? Because the new Sure Mix Crisco is giving them cakes so tender and delicious, they're a cause for real celebration. Because you see, this amazing new Crisco brings you advantages you've never had before in any shortening, not even the most expensive. Crisco can give you cakes that are lighter and smoother in texture. Cakes that taste better than you can make them with any other home shortening we know. Oh, that's a lot to promise. Sure is, but, well, Crisco lives up to its claims. You see, it's the result of the most revolutionary shortening discovery in years. A patented discovery you get only in Crisco. And that's why SureMix Crisco can now promise you these three exclusive new cake-making advantages. One, lighter cakes. Two, smoother textured cakes. Three, cakes that taste better than you ever made them before. Even the cake batter you get with Crisco will prove how different Crisco is from other shortenings you've used. You'll get a cake batter that's smooth as satin. A batter that fairly shouts, I'm going to give you a really delicious cake. Why, just listen to this verdict from families all over the country who took part in a recent independent test of the new Sure Mix Crisco. Hundreds of women, just like you, bake cakes with Crisco right in their own kitchens. Those cakes were compared to cakes made with every favorite shortening used in all those homes. And when the families of these women made their choice... Their vote was four to one for cakes made with Crisco over those made with all the other shortenings combined. So make your family's cakes Crisco cakes, will you? And remember, it wasn't only four to one for lighter cakes, but four to one for flakier pastry, four to one for better tasting fried foods. That was the family vote, four to one, for new Sure Mix Crisco. Well, sir, it's late afternoon as our scene opens now. And here in the living room of the small house, halfway up in the next block, we find Mrs. Victor Gook and young Mr. Rushgook. 
Sade is fixing a stern eye upon her son and speaking in this wise. What exactly did Mr. Erickson say? <laughs> he says, tell your mother I dropped by to leave these beautiful, beautiful wallpaper patterns. How long was he here? No time at all. Ducked right in and right out. Wanted to avoid me. Yes, I believe that's a fact. Because all the time he was talking, he kept looking nervously out the window. Afraid I'd pop in before he could escape. Uh, yeah. And these are the beautiful wallpaper patterns, are they? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful wallpaper patterns. Beulah picked them out, huh? Yeah. Mr. Erickson said a woman's taste in such matters is better than a man's. Oh, ain't he the slick customer. The world's most wonderful landlord. Hey, guy, who are you? Come on. Hi. I bet your mother took the early train for St. Paul, Minnesota. Hi. What's these little tablet paper thingamadoodles pinned on the patterns? Notes from Beulah to you. Oh, indeed. Greetings, friends. I hope I'm not too late for the banquet. Fact of the matter is, I was held up and robbed by two villainous road agents down the didn't street. Didn't bump into I... Mr. Erickson, did you? Erickson? No, I didn't. He waited till the coast was clear and both you and me away from home and then sneaked in and handed Rush a batch of wallpaper patterns. Really? These rotten things. Hmm. Look at them once. Cheapest, shoddiest trash I ever seen. That's certainly a poisonous green there on top. Read the little note. Hmm? There's a little note goes with it Beulah wrote. Yes, his daughter Beulah picked out these samples. Tell what he said about that, Rush. A woman's taste in such matters is better than a man's. Isn't that a nice box of oyster crackers to take to the picnic? I'm the woman with the upstairs to be papered. I'm the woman that has to live with the wallpaper. But am I the woman to select the paper? No, sir, re, sir. His daughter Beulah's the woman to do that. A woman's taste is better than a man's. All right, here's some samples of a woman's taste. You do have a selection, kiddo. How do you mean? Erickson didn't show up with just one wallpaper pattern. There must be a dozen or so in that pile. Beulah winnowed out the ugly ones. Mr. Erickson say so? I'm quoting his exact words. Beulah winnowed out the ugly wallpaper patterns, sent over these beautiful, beautiful samples for you to make your choice from. Sometimes I get discouraged, Jake. Mm-hmm. This constant, constant, constant battling with the landlord takes the heart out of a person. Mm. Never a week goes by, but what he don't try some stunt or other. Don't you generally emerge the victor in these encounters? I'm getting worn down. Mm. The stuff he attempts to pull off keeps getting wilder and wilder. Erickson is a scoundrel, no doubt about it. Well, he can't do this, can he? We're the people living in the house. We got a right to select our own wallpaper, haven't we? I imagine so. I never heard of a landlord that done the wallpaper selecting for his renters. After all, he owns the property, man. Well, that don't hurt. We pay rent for the property. We can move out any time we feel like it. So which? If we selected wallpaper Mr. Erickson didn't like and then moved out, he'd be stuck with the wallpaper. Gosh. Sure. Look, suppose I rented Smelly Clark's bicycle and then decided to paint it a horrible yellow. Smelly to have a legitimate thing. Oh, you're just arguing to hear yourself argue. Big, there's no sense in what he's saying, is there? I'm on foreign ground here, kiddo. I don't know just how the law reads on the matter. We've rented houses before. We've had new wallpaper before. Do you remember any instance where our landlord insisted on picking out our wallpaper? No. Of course you don't. Sometime I'm just going to explode when he comes around here with his stunts. Oh, I wouldn't let myself get upset, Sade. You know, you don't have to paper your upstairs with anything but what pleases you. Erickson's an old fathead. Let's just look upon him as an old fathead and enjoy a quiet laugh over his feeble mind. No, but a person gets sick of it after a while. (laughs) It's kind of halfway funny the way he and I are always at each other's throats. Boy, you have to hand it to him, though. He don't quit. He stays right in there fighting every minute. Suppose we look over these beautiful patterns. (laughs) Beautiful, beautiful patterns, God. Uh Uh-huh. Say, talk about your poisonous greens. This baby on top here takes the cake. Could you imagine living in a room with wallpaper like that? I'm afraid I'd grow morbid and homicidal. Read what Beulah wrote on that piece of paper she pinned to the sample rush. Uh, let's see. (laughs) Read that loud. For those who love a rich, restful emerald color, this lovely pattern should be a perfect joy. Oh, my, 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 my. Rich, restful emerald color, huh? If I was entertaining somebody I despised for the weekend, I'd expose him to this rich, restful emerald color. And I'd guarantee by Monday morning he'd feel vaguely ill, be affected with spots before the eyes, and a tendency toward involuntary shakes and shudderings. What's underneath the rich, restful emerald pattern, Rush? Uh, this nice wallpaper. Oh, my stars. 
Are those baboons in the design? Gorillas, I think. These are gorillas, ain't they, guys? I guess so, or apes. Apes crawling around in trees and showing their teeth. Want to hear Beulah's comment? Yeah. A touch of whimsy for the art lover. Your guests will praise your originality and humor. What's whimsy? Oh, cuteness, I guess. Uh Uh-huh. Thanks, Beulah. What's next, Rush? This. Alternating pink and purple stripes. Ish, ish, ish. I'd feel like a barber pole surrounded by wallpaper like that. Hurt your eyes if you looked at it long enough. Beginning to hurt mine already. What's Beulah have to say? No, Uncle Tablet Paper pinned to this pattern. Well, she just plain give up. Alternating pink and purple stripes were too much for her. There's a comment pinned to the next one. You appreciate why Mr. Erickson had Beulah do this, don't you, Vic? Presumably, in order that... In order that I wouldn't get a hold of a catalog of expensive wallpaper patterns and select something that'd run him into money. He took no chances. He hunted himself up the cheapest, shoddiest merchandise he could find and let his daughter do the selecting. Uh, he's a wicked landlord. He's the world's champion landlord. Well, I'm backing up my argument of a minute ago about whether or not he's got a right to select your wallpaper for you. Bear in mind also, he's got to pay for the wallpaper. Well? As long as he has to whip out his pocketbook and slap out the money for the wallpaper, maybe he figures... Oh, fiddly whittle. No, but really... It's his house and his wallpaper. Probably he figures human flesh and blood is not obliged. You're yes. just arguing to hear yourself argue. Let's see the next sample. Well, speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. Three three little monkeys? Yeah. One's got his hands over his eyes, one's got his hands over his ears, and one's got his hands over his mouth. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful for our upstairs? Wouldn't that be wonderful for our upstairs? What's Bueller's comment, Pitchfork? Um... Uh, a sweet little thought and a sweet little design combined to make this pattern a perfect darling. You hit the nail right on the head, Beulah. Wouldn't be such bad-looking wallpaper if the monkeys didn't look so stupid. They're out of perspective. Look, this monkey here has got a head twice as big as the monkey next to him. And over on this side, the half-wit monkey's so small you can't... Stop on the... That's him. That's Erickson now. Calling up all Axel Grease and Peach Butter to inquire about the beautiful patterns. Mm, beautiful, beautiful patterns. I'll talk to him, Rush. Okay. He'll think a cyclone broke loose. Hello? Oh, hello, lady. Ruthie. Miss Stembottom, please. Oh, nothing much. Had to run over on West Monroe Street on an errand that took an hour or two. Stopped in at Miss Trogel's and Heddle's both. Mm-hmm. Oh, fine. Why, not that I know of. Vic's here just a second. Anything up your sleeve for this evening? Uh-uh. Five hundred? Sure. Invite him here. Go ahead. He says, grand lady. Yeah. Say, how about you people heading over in this direction? Dandy. Oh, any time. Sure, 7.30, quarter to 8, 8, 8 15, or kind of halfway and around there. Hmm? Fine. All right, Ruthie. You bet. You bet. Goodbye, lady. She's sweet. Mm. <laughs> Reminds me a good deal of Mr. Erickson. He's certainly sweet. Oh, how sweet. Oh, 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 how sweet. <laughs> the sweetest, sweetest landlord in all the whole wide world. Mm. Well, let's see the next wallpaper pattern, Rush. Purple splotches on a bright yellow background. Oh, oh, oh. Look, Vic. God, get dizzy if he stared at that long enough. A guy would get downright sick. What's Beulah have to say about it, Phyllis? Um, uh, a dainty design and a pleasing color contrast certain to win the delighted approval of discriminating people. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And there we leave Crisco's Vic and Sade <laughs> until the next time. Say, when you make cakes, don't you love to see your ingredients work into a fine, smooth batter? Well, that's one of the advantages you get with the new Sure Mix Crisco. With Crisco, you get cake batters as smooth as satin. And that's not all. Thanks to a patented shortening discovery, Crisco now offers you three exclusive advantages. 
lighter cakes, smoother textured cakes, and cakes that taste better than you can make them with any other home shortening we know of. Why, recently, hundreds of women took part in an independent home test. They baked cakes with Crisco, and these cakes were compared to cakes made with every type of shortening. And when those families made their choice, they voted four to one for cakes made with Crisco over all the other shortenings combined. And remember, it wasn't only four to one for lighter cakes, but four to one for flakier pastry, four to one for better tasting fried foods. That was the family vote, four to one, for new Sure Mix Crisco. And don't forget to listen to Crisco's Vic and Save the next time. This is Mel Allen speaking. And landlords, it's, it's, it's a timeless topic, no doubt. Uh, talking about the, the landlord picking out hideous wallpaper and giving you the illusion of having a choice. And, and poor Sage, she just gets so upset by it. Although I guess I would, anybody would be upset when given such choices. Angry monkeys, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil monkeys. It, it, that's just... But it's a different kind of absurdity than what we were talking about with Doc Slees, for sure. I mean, in the real world, I mean, I think landlords generally choose the wall colors. I mean, most places I've lived, it's a color, and it's going to stay that color unless you're going to restore it to whatever color. And you know, you know, nobody really wants to put a lot into somebody else's property unless you're really committed to stay there. And that, that, that we're just getting way outside of the realm of appreciation here. Let's get back to appreciating and talk a little more about, and another odd coincidence that I didn't even think of with that Ghost and Mrs. Muir show. The uh, show starred as the young widow, Hope Lange, who played Dick Van Dyke's wife in one of his sitcoms, which is just, yeah. All, the, all these Van Dykes popping up. And uh, here's the uh, plot according to Wikipedia. The series stars Hope Lange as Carolyn Muir, a young widow who rents Gull Cottage near the fictional fishing village of Schooner Bay, May, and moves into the rental with her two children, a housekeeper. Hey, can you imagine having a housekeeper? This was like a staple of sitcoms throughout my childhood and who had a housekeeper um and and a dog yep the house is haunted by the ghost of its former owner a 19th century sea captain daniel gregg played by ed mulher and um charles nelson riley plays claymore gregg the great nephew of the captain who rents the cottage without telling her it's haunted oh so he knows it's haunted and it's based on a book that they made a movie of with uh, Rex Harrison and Gene Tierney, but uh, there's some sort of romance because between them, but uh, they have significant differences. The captain being a 19th century chauvinist and Carolyn, a 20th century career woman, but they compromise. It, it's presented, yeah, that's creepy. A woman working out a relationship with a ghost, it just just strange and it only ran two seasons unlike mr ed and it's just so like he said just creepy absolutely creepy uh, all of these ghosts in the machine and 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 his billionaire rant i mean it, it, he makes a good case for some conspiracy that you know they're trying to bump off these billionaires with these dangerous things like, well, these uh, Richard Branson Virgin Galactic space flights, which uh, I got to tell you, I after this, I really wonder how many people are going to go up in yet another. I mean, I think Richard Branson actually used real engineers and real people, but it also seems like some crazy stunt that I don't know, I guess it's boasting rights, the idea that you went into space. I mean, when I was a kid, I, I really thought, because of the, the popular fiction and science at the time, that by now, you know, we'd be commuting back and forth to space stations and Mars and all that. 
I mean, the Apollo program just kind of died, and yeah, we have we had Skylab, and uh, the space shuttle, and now all that's gone. And are there people in space anymore? Is 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 it a thing? Is are there gonna be? I I haven't been paying that much attention. I mean, the closest thing are these flights that Richard Branson, which are allegedly starting, I believe, at the end of this summer, right here outside of Truth or... Well, it's not very close. It's probably a good 45-minute drive from here to the spaceport. I got to visit it um, recently. I'd never been out there. I went out there uh, with um, the Bee and Sylvie when they visited, and we had... It, it was kind of nice to see it. That building is really neat. You can't get very close. but And there's this huge, cool sculpture and the land out there. If nothing else, like most drives in the state of New Mexico, uh, you got to appreciate it. The landscape is just so beautiful, barren, and virtually, I mean, yeah, they stuck some fences up. But it's untouched. It's just this wild land out there. Yeah, looking at all of these programs, including Vic and Sade in today's light, gives us, I mean, that's one of the things that I tend to do here on the show is contrast all of the things that have changed. And I'm just this person stuck in the 20th century in a certain way. I'm sitting here drawing and drawing. I mean, that's become my pastime i mean I'm, even when i'm putting together podcasts while i'm listening to the other shows that i put together on the showcase i have my pen out and my drawing pads and i'm doing all sort of, I, I, and i don't know it makes me feel good and who knows maybe someday i will well there's one gallery here that's already offered to give me a little show so i'll show it and i mean i'm not averse if you want an original Brett uh, piece of artwork. By all means, be in touch. I give the email address at the end of the show. And uh, yeah, I. It's expensive. I mean, who? Know, how do people decide? I mean, let, let me digress here a little. How do people decide how much they're going to charge for a piece of art? Is, I mean, I know if you go to school, there's some square inch. If it's this big and it's this medium. But I, I didn't go to art school, so I, I'm just this guy who dabbles, and I mean, people seem to like it, which gives me this false ego that, oh, this is good, but I'm having fun, and really, if I wasn't having fun, and I was just doing it to make money, it would just be another job, just like these shows. I mean, it, it, the fun comes first. I'm actually wondering lately if one of these uh, syndication companies that uh, package radio, whether they're looking for something to uh, program in the middle of the night, something, uh, would this be a viable format and presentation or, or this or the showcase? Um, and then, of course, you run into all the copyright stuff, but uh, it, I can dream, can't I? Um and Frank saw that Indiana Jones movie, which, I don't know, I did the sequels anymore. I just can't imagine, and I, he, he dismisses it. I'm not sure if I'll ever see it. I, I have my doubts whether I will ever see it, especially if Frank says it's not very good. And the other thing is, I mean, I used to, if I started a movie, I would be committed to see it through and see it to the end and I don't do that anymore if I lose interest or I think it's dumb or whatever I just move on to the next thing because we just have way too much stuff to check out to get caught up in any of that um, stuff but one thing I am enjoying I've mentioned before uh, gradually going through Deep Space Nine on Paramount Plus, and I'd never seen it, and uh, I am up to, what, the fourth season, and they've brought back Worf from the next generation, and this, I like that. I, I like that they're tying the shows together, and uh, as I've mentioned, this show 
there's character development, things change, and dropping Worf into the middle of the whole thing has added this really neat dimension. Uh, I especially like Worf's interaction with Odo, the shape-shifting head of security on the Deep Space Nine, whose people, it has developed, are uh, kind of causing mischief, and they're not quite at war with the Federation, but they're not really getting along in the Klingons, uh, oddly, now that they brought Worf back, I guess to build a little Frisian, are now kind of no longer allied with the Federation, which, again, I mean, this let's all be friends thing is nice, but you do need some dynamic tension. Like the landlord choosing the wallpaper, or that your horse talks and gets you into all sorts of trouble, and you can't blame it on the horse. All of these big first world problems that are presented to us in our media. It's just what I like to talk about and have fun with. And by all means, you should have fun with this too. Be in touch with me. I mean, you can do a segment here just like we allow on the Overnight Scape Central. Or if you give me topics or uh, ideas, I'm more than happy to wing it. Um, the email address there, here rather, is kpqr.torc at gmail.com. And uh, you can leave comments on our Facebook page, on the post on OnSug, on the YouTube posting. Uh, I, I check all those out, and I, I'm i curious. What do you think? Uh, I mean, this is now, what, the 25th episode of The Appreciator, and it's still kind of settling into stuff. What do you think? Let me know. And in the meantime, because our time has reached that give-or-take-half-hour mark, we're going to let you go with this proviso that you set the controls for the heart of the fun.